I'm doing a 60 minute session for a client. This is a follow up session. So if you're interested in checking out any of the previous sessions, I'll put information and links in the description. So I'm going to go ahead and read the goals here, get started. There's a couple different things. All right. The first one is about chakras. Are my chakras now cleared and working properly? If not, which ones are having a problem and can it, they be healed? Okay. Okay. The next one. Okay. What would my highest soul self most want me to know at this point in my life? Regarding my soul contracts for this incarnation, is there anything I haven't done that it wants me to do or achieve before I run out of time? Anything I've done right. <laughs> Let's definitely look for the things you've done right. <laughs> I would think everything you've done is perfectly divine. So right and wrong, we can just let those words go and just see you as divine. You know what's interesting? This just hits me right now. I woke up this morning and and I had this epiphany that I'm sort of um, the main character in my own story and that everybody in my life is also a character in my story. And as the character in my story, I can't ever be anything but exactly as I am. And by being who and what I am, as I am, I'm inspiring the other characters in the story as they inspire me um, to learn and to grow together. And there's something about seeing each other in this way, for me, um, it shifted something. It was like some kind of weird epiphany and I woke up with it and it made me feel more okay with myself. And I don't think there's a human being on the planet who feels perfect <laughs> by any means. Um, we all dream of being that way or living some kind of idea of a perfect life. Um, but the life is already perfect just the way it is because it's exactly what we need right now. Um, and therefore, everything about you and every th choice you've ever made in your life has always been correct, you know. But I am going to check in on this. I want to see exactly what you did right in this lifetime. <laughs> I want to stress what you did right. I want to see what comes forward with that. And chakras too. I really want to take a look at, if, if I can, I'm going to just sort of let it go as guided by spirit, but I want to see if I can take a look at each and every one of your chakras and really just um, help you feel well-rounded. Because your chakras, your, your life is always changing. It's always inspiring you to feel differently about yourself and the world around you. The stars are always moving in alignment. So it's encouraging um, new aspects of your inner universe to find their way up to the surface, which you could feel, vulnerably feel, in different chakras throughout your whole life. So you're always kind of clearing out stuff, which means your chakras are always going to be out of balance, so to speak. Um, but they, but they're, it's, it's really, it's, it's like we all want to have our chakras completely open, but yet every minute of every day, you know, let's just say all your chakras are completely open. And then in an hour, you get a phone call that's completely stressing you out. Now your chakras are blocked again, you know, because you have to work through that insecurity. You have to work through that vulnerability. So how could I truly open all your chakras when already in the future, you're going to feel insecure about something? That means you still haven't worked on completely resolving that lesson in your life. So that chakra still has work to do. Um, and chakras are like an infinite universe. So to go even into, you know, your emotional universe, oh my God, you know how much stuff is in there? It's, it's gorgeous in there. And it's also scary in there. Um, but it's, it's exploring and discovering itself, which is all you as well, exploring and discovering yourself emotionally. That's what the solar plexus chakra is all about. But this is just me chatterboxing away. Um, I'm going to read the third goal here. And then I'm going to, I'm going to dive in. Okay. Number three, can you seek out my primary guide to Maratha, to Maratha, and tell me what he looks like? He's a teacher and a guide who came in with me. I would love to receive any messages that he might have for me. Please let him know how much I love him and sincerely appreciate his patience, guidance, teaching, and protection. 
Can't wait to see him again on the other side. <laughs> so cool. <sighs> Tamaritha. Oh yeah, I'm all over this. Okay. We are going to definitely look at your chakras. We're definitely going to look at your soul contracts. Your the point of your existence as yourself. <laughs> we're going to look at it. We're going to find out if you did anything right. <laughs> we're going to find we're going to go visit with this primary guide, Tamaritha. Okay. I think these are some fantastic goals. Okay, I'm going to get in the zone here. I'm so ready to do this. Thank you so much for the opportunity to connect with you again and for sharing openly with others. All right. So right now I'm just kind of, um, I'm in the doorway of your energy field. I just want to see what I hear first. All the while, I'm sending out kind of a phone call to Tamaritha and saying, hey, you know what time it is. You know what's up. <laughs> Get over here. And then we'll just see if Tamaritha comes, which, of course, I'm quite certain that I won't have a problem connecting with him. And then soul contract. You're in a hurry. That's that's the first thing. You're in a hurry to get a lot of things done. And you want it to be all done. You want to actually feel like you are complete. There's nothing else you need to do. You're you're really like, "Okay, let's wrap this thing up." Let's let's wrap this thing up. Let's be done with it. It's it's sort of like in our world, you, you could be in a business setting and you're trying to roll out this goal, okay? So everybody, we have, you know, phase one, phase two, phase three, based on like this month, we need to have this stuff done. And then by this month, by this month, by this month, and then by this date, we'll be able to roll it on out. And then everything will be done, right? But even in a business, you roll out a new product and now you're, you're creating the next one. You know, you're rolling out the next product, the next product, the next product. You're having to go back and um, fix some of, uh, tweak up the previous product, you know, to make it a, um, a little more smooth, smoother than you had originally thought. You know, there's, there's always this flow of, you know, when is anything ever done exactly? Like, I still will have to do the dishes for the rest of my life. Like, it's never going to stop. Like, the, the laundry will still pile up. I will still have to do the laundry. It'll never be just complete. And tomorrow I'm going to look older than today. And then 10 years from now, I will look older than I do right now. Unless we've somehow figured this out. And then maybe I'll even look any younger than I look right now. So nothing will ever be complete. <laughs> I'm to present this to you for you to think about. No, I, I, I have to say it just like this. Nothing will ever be complete. I want to see what, what your reaction is. You, you respect that idea. You get it. So you're going to rephrase your own energy field's relationship with wanting to feel complete. Because it's, it's sort of like you can accept that there will always be things to work on and ways to grow, but there's some very specific things you want to feel complete with. <laughs> Almost like you're telling the universe that I don't want to work on that anymore. I am done with that. It's sort of like being in college and you're trying out computer programming because you think you might like it and then you're getting halfway through and you're like yeah i i'm done i'm dropping this class now <laughs> before it gets any worse you know it's kind of like this you're sort of telling the universe you know what i've had my fair share of this i'm done with this it's kind of like people saying this is going to be my last time on earth i'm done with earth so there's something, it's not necessarily saying that you're done with Earth lifetimes, um, it, but it is something like, I want to say that this is done or I don't, I don't want to revisit this. 
I don't want to be a computer programmer. I don't want to take that class anymore. So I don't want to study that um, experience in, in human lives. Like I don't want to study that specific learning anymore. Or I'm complete with learning about that topic. So some aspect of yourself says it is complete inside of itself with that learning. Still figuring out what that thing is. You really want to narrow it down so it's not such a broad energy. Because right now when I'm in your energy field, it feels very broad. It feels like, like I just want to wrap this up. I'm done now. Okay, cool. I can go take a vacation forever. I'm done. But the, there's so many infinite, I mean, there's trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of pathways here. So how, so what does that mean exactly? How do you become done with all these things that you don't even know about? Because <laughs> you can't, it's like, how do you live? I mean, technically you do live everything of the past and the future in every single moment of your current life. It's just really inconceivable to the human mind. Me talking about this is really, I mean, you're such a good listener. You're receiving this message and you're really good at thinking through it and thinking for yourself as well and making your own statements. And that's really good. You're, you're, you're choosing to say what it is that you feel is the truth inside of you. Despite what I'm feeling, I, I share what I feel and then you share what you feel, which is good. It's helping us to narrow this whole thing down. So it feels like this conversation has said everything it needs to say. I'm entering into a new scene, a new experience. And it actually feels like we can slow down. There's a lot more patience. Hmm. Has to do with your heart, but I feel like this is very limited. I feel like there's a lot more to this than just your heart. There's some things you just simply don't want to look at, don't want to follow through with. And it's very polite. It's a very polite way of saying no thank you. I want to focus on this. It's almost like you're trying to redirect your energy so that it's like, um, you know, I spent enough time watching um, R-rated movies. I'm just going to watch G-rated movies. And that's what I'm going to do. And when I do that, when I make this choice of change, then I'm changing everything that has anything to do with what was. So now I'm changing the whole timeline and everything that I represent. So it doesn't really matter if you're not choosing um, to dive into certain directions. You're choosing to change it up across the board. You're wanting something simpler. You're wanting something lighter, lighthearted. It's actually really awesome. It shows that you have power and control over what it is that you want. And you are manifesting that. In your past and future, in your present. Hmm. I'm going to talk to Tamara, though. It feels like you're taking the bull by the horns here. You're telling it how it's going to be. And because you're doing that, it's hard for me to, to decipher your energy field being in or out of balance. Because you're choosing to define your own balance. Which now conflicts with me helping you to see what the balance is within your own essence because you're choosing to define it for yourself which is you taking control which is really awesome this is still the beginning of the session but this is what i'm experiencing in your energy field right now
I'm going to see what your guide has to say about this. Okay, so basically I have to disconnect from you and then turn away from your energy field. And then I'm just going to go straight to him and we're going to talk just me and him. There's some reason why I need to disconnect from your energy field when I go have this conversation. So I am, I'm letting go of you. And then literally, it's like I'm going into Tamaratha's energy field in a way. But I'm just going to visit to get to know this guide. Hmm. You could definitely have many faces, but let's... um. I would say some kind of islander, ti a tribal islander, not Hawaiian, but um, something similar. But he also is uh, works with bird energy as well, lots of bird feathers, particularly red and green. He has tan skin. I see other reflections of his own identity, but this is the one that he really stands strong with. Because when I look into his eyes, I feel like I could go into other places, other times, other faces. Males and females. That would look nothing like each other. He really likes to represent Earth more than other planets. However... This uh, bird energy makes me think of like blue avions, but it's not blue. There's red and green feathers. And as I'm looking at him, it's really activating um, energy <laughs> right here on my head and right here behind my ear. It's like buzzing and almost kind of itchy in a way. He's not, uh, he, there's something peculiar about him. Because it's almost as if he um, intermixes what is like a tribal, but it's not a warrior type energy. It's also not like um, a medicine man. It's not all. It's also not like a leader. It's also not like um, your average just person in the community, in the tribe. He's a bit odd. Like he might be a bit funny or have a sense of humor, because he seems kind of. In and out of character at the same time. And he has a staff like, uh, like a wizard would have. And there's lots of feathers on it. But he, it's not. it keeps echoing back that it's not like... Um, he's not a magical man. He's not a medicine man. He's not like the leader of the tribe. He's just some guy that likes this stick. That's it. And he doesn't even use it to help him walk. He just has it. <laughs> there's something odd, you know? <laughs> He likes being odd. He kind of shows me somebody um, in our world, like um, if you live in a city, you might see this, uh, an entertainer on the street. Somebody who would be a, a mime or someone who would dance, um, somebody who would do magic tricks, um, an entertainer on the street. He feels like he, he sort of echoes that he's an entertainer. He's creative. He's innovative. He's also a bit unpredictable because you don't know. It's kind of one of those people, like, they, they're they making a joke even though they sound really serious. So you don't know, are you actually making a really funny joke or are you really serious? Because you're kind of really funny. <laughs> you're, like, going way over my head here, but I think you're really funny. <laughs> it's the joke on me. I don't know. So he's kind of like that too. He also loves music. He would be more like the tribe uh, musician. <laughs> and he loves all different sounds. Not just drums. Kind of like um, a xylophone type instrument. He's also spiritual, not that he is in the community and um, people seek him for guidance. It's his relationship with the ocean 
and the and the soils the earth and the sky like his relationship with and he seems to be an astral traveler he shows me himself um psychically communicating with other people and he's just uh on the beach and um he's enchanted by different people that he meets through psychic communication and he even um goes into such a meditation that he leaves his body and visits them at times it feels like is he a guide or is he a real person in another version i mean it looks to me like earth it feels to me like earth but it, he doesn't necessarily feel like your average spirit guide. When I look into his eyes, I see many lifetimes. Incarnated lifetimes. Which spirit guides have that. That's really super normal. Because spirit guides are incarnated beings as well. You can be incarnated and a spirit guide at the same time. Because your soul is so infinite. But you definitely know him. Feels like something un unreconciled between you both in another lifetime. Something romantic. It's just the feeling of how, how he... How it's like... It's like he has two different lives. One life is what everybody perceives his, him to be. The other life is what, who and what he truly is, which is inconceivable, which is why he isn't perceived as who he truly is by those in his community. And so that is why in his own time, when he's alone, he takes time to, he literally connects with beings that are totally other planets, uh, stars, um, spaceships, like even... Um, beings that are conscious beings that are um in in the ocean um he's communicating and and this is very normal this feels very second nate like very normal like very every day and he keeps showing me that you are somebody that he's psychically communicating with when he goes to the beach he talks to you and then he leaves his body to come visit you which is why this is complicated for me because he is definitely a guide, but he's more of a friend than a guide. Like he's really a deep, meaningful friend. Feels like a real person. But he also says he'll absolutely be there when you're um, on the other side. In fact, he expects you to come visit him, not him having to come visit you. Like, he's looking forward to that. <laughs> because it seems like he comes to visit you, but this idea comes to mind that you will come to visit him. Which, again, makes me feel like he's a real person. Just feels a lot like Earth, and maybe that's his connection with you that's bringing me here to that feeling. He definitely looks like a human. Hmm. He said you would resonate with... Um, it, he's okay. It's, it's like this story. He's okay with not... with. It's like people would perceive him as a musician, like somebody who likes to make music, who's a little quirky, a bit of a goofy personality, or some kind of humorous personality. Because he is a bit like that. But he's also wise and uh, serious too, but he's a lot more on the creative, lighthearted side of the serious side, okay? He's definitely over there. But he is not um, bothered by the fact that he's perceived for these simple ways that he is but yet he carries this master um and it's his own secret and when he is alone then he does this he does this and he is at, at peace with living to a double life and somehow you would that would be meaningful to you to think about that 
Tamaratha as living a double life. And on one side of that life, then he comes to visit you to see how you're doing and that when you are ready to move on, that you will come to visit him. And he, he's in no hurry either. There's a really important message about slow down. Don't get ahead of yourself. It's almost like you've made a decision before you, you really know what decision you've actually made. It's incredible how at peace he is. He is so, it's so easy for him to just be without waver at peace. Because it's not, um, it's like when I look into his heart as Tamaratha, uh, Hold on, there's a there's a movement in my own heart here. <sighs> it's like he could sit on the beach and enjoy the conversations that he has with all these other beings and his life is completely fulfilled. And to even be not interpreted as whole all, all the way like this whole him that he is that people are only able to see like 50% of his identity, um, he's not bothered by that. He's so, so at peace and he kind of likes it in a way, like a weird game. Because he likes being the musician, he likes being that personality too. He's definitely not related to Blue Avions, he says this. He's a lot more earthbound. Could he be from a different earth time? Could he be from an earth future? Could he be from an earth past? That's the surreal part about this. When you're in astral travel, can you travel into the past and the future? Can you travel into many different timelines? Or do you exist in just this dimensional experience, this dimensional time and interdimensional experience? Like there's something surreal about this conversation. He's a, he really expresses himself in very simple ways, really easy to process and understand ways, but he is very, very, very complex in what he understands. It's incredible, and he really does have a human feel to him. This is deep love in your heart and in his heart. And it doesn't matter what body, what life, what experiences, male, female, it doesn't matter because the love is always there and very enriching. You have, this is not, it is very clear. And I know you're, you're saying he's a spirit guide. You could totally see him as a spirit guide. I feel him as more physical than a spirit guide. But I'll let you decide for yourself on that, okay? But I, when I feel him as more physical than a spirit guide, um, you have not run into him physically in your life, just so you know. And I don't, I can't gauge that he's actually in our present day. Like you could go to Hawaii and run into him or something like this. I don't pick, I don't pick up on that. I can't really understand where he exists in, in relation to our present time and dimension. But yet he seems to come from earth and he, he seems to be human himself. These are the things that I'm supposed to tell you. I really like him because there's something genuine. He doesn't have to, he can just be himself and you can get to know him without 
saying, so where were you born? Um, what, you know, what, tell me about your, your childhood or where'd you grow up? What'd you do? Like, it's almost like he has this demeanor where you wouldn't ask him questions like this. You would just kind of um, get to know him by just doing daily everyday things with him and just talking about this present moment and the things that make you laugh and the things that make you question life and just to be in that moment of the present with him. It doesn't matter where he grew up. It doesn't, these details don't matter. It's like when you truly get to know someone is when it doesn't matter where they grew up. It doesn't matter what their last name is. It's how you connect with them just, you know, talking about, it's like it's just sitting next to someone on a bus and just start striking up a conversation. It'll either work out or it won't, you know. This is like you it would be just instantaneously sparked with meaning to talk about everyday stuff. And you would get to know everything you would ever need to know about him by just talking about everyday stuff because he just seems to say more than his words. He carries all of these energetic meanings with him in his presence. He's taking me further away from the feeling of earth. And he's taking me to what feels like the experience of an actual spirit guide of an even higher self. And it just dawned on me and I say, well, why, why did I have to disconnect, you know, with this, with my client here and then go to you? Why couldn't I just keep it all open? There seems to be something um, important in me just going to visit him, just me and him. I'm going to um, bring you into the scene now, which is me opening up the connection with you, okay? So I'm just having your consciousness now standing here and we're talking, but it doesn't feel like the earthbound version of him, the him that's closest to earth. It feels like a spirit version of him. You have a shyness. You're kind of shy about it. And I don't know why, but he's starting to look like Batman. <laughs> and I see Batman and I see Joker. And um, you're slowly coming out from behind me and you're looking at this. This is hard. For some reason, these... Batman and Joker, they're more symbolic than just Batman and Joker. They're speaking to something in your deeper self. I mean, you could really go into a, a, the meaning. I mean, Batman can't kill Joker and Joker can't kill Batman because there's something about they're the perfect balance for each other. So if one didn't exist, then the balance would be completely out of balance. Um, the life, the background and the life history of what Batman is. What does he represent? Who is he? And then the Joker. One seems to be the dark side. One seems to be the light side, right? For some reason, you look at these two and they're symbolic and they have symbolic meaning inside yourself. This is actually going very deep into your energy field. And Tamaratha is uh, this, um, it's a very high vibrational spirit being here. It's really important that we see the many sides of himself. As um, someone who goes through an inc incarnations, who seems to be incarnated right now, and that incarnation seems to even know about you. I can tell the difference between consciousness that is more at a lower dimensional plane because it has a more of an identity, more of a defined expression where a spirit consciousness is so expanded and it's so much more, I guess. It's also a lot lighter frequency. It's a lot lighter. It's um It's just a lot lighter. It's a lot less complicated. Not that the other version was complicated, but it just feels that way. For me to describe it, it feels like that. Okay. 
you're in a very unique time right now for in your life and who you are how you want to identify yourself how you want to move forward you are and it's I don't know that I've ever felt this with any client I've ever worked with before and I I'm still trying to figure out how would I define what that means exactly to me other than you could live your life um and you're going through life and the challenges of life. Like it's the R-rated movie. Like I've got to look at this hard stuff. I have to work through this hard stuff. I have to heal this hard stuff. And it is hard. <laughs> okay. So you could say that you've been participated in the in the R-rated, the hard, um, difficult um, human life experiences. Okay. And something, some kind of shift has happened here. And now, you know what? There is no R-rated for me anymore because it's all G-rated now. And that's all that I relate to and that's that's what I believe. And by doing this, you actually have the power to change everything. That you literally control your all your chakras, the balance of all your chakras, the balance of your very identity, the balance of all past and future lifetimes. You control the whole thing. <laughs> it's, it's really... Um, and you're really... Uh, it's still a bit undecided though. It's still a bit undecided. But you're leaning towards this. I'm complete. I've done everything. G-rated. I'm moving on now. I mean, and it's so like, um, it's like quitting a job. I'm done now. See ya. And then you walk out the door. Done. <laughs> your, your energy field is like, I made my choice. I'm not walking back. I'm not going back the other way. I'm going to keep moving forward with my choice. And when you stand that strong and that solid, everything has to follow through with you. It's forced to, all the energies are forced to follow through with you in your choice. And now you're moving into the choice of new experiences based on that choice, which can challenge you because it's going to ask you if that's truly what you feel. Do you still enjoy this? Do you want to make any changes? Do you miss the R-rated life? Um, do you need to look at something? Like it's going to constantly like poke you. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you really, really sure? But are you sure? You know, that's what life does. <laughs> it's really constantly asking you, how sure are you? You know, <laughs> in your choices. That's why we're always as human beings like, oh, over here, over there, over there, over there. Stop. I just want life to stop. Okay. Life it takes a vacation. Okay. Now we're back in the middle of it. Like it's always just everywhere. But right now you're kind of owning this simplicity you're owning a completion it's it to me it feels like you're getting ahead of yourself but at the same time it also feels like incredibly strong and I don't know that I want to I don't want know that I want to say anything about it <laughs> like that it needs work or anything I want to see where this energy goes all right so you're here it, what is so interesting is that Tamaratha, um, higher self type, type essence isn't quite the higher self, but is a much higher dimensional expression. You are as at the same dimensional plane, much higher dimensional. It doesn't feel, it feels like your higher self, but it feels like it's pretty freaking high up there. Okay. All right. So you're here, he's here, and then I'm here. And then there you are. And so you're just kind of standing here you know, Batman and Joker, it's it's somehow you needed to see that. Somehow this was representing maybe a conflict within yourself. But you're trying to move on from that that type of Gotham City um, energetic memories, energetic relationships, uh, etc. That type of hardship is too much. You're choosing the G-rated stuff now. Care Bears, you know? <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. So let's just see. It seems like it seems like you both, <laughs> your higher self, let's just say higher self, okay? Um, Tamaratha's higher self, Mr. T's higher self. <laughs> um, you seem to be like companions, like a divine feminine, divine masculine, like um, companions or something, like boyfriend, girlfriend. <laughs> like it, it has like a lover nature to it. There's something sweet and... Um, supportive let's call it supportive and it does it does feel that way 
feels very just loving. It feels just loving. It's not like we're teenagers here. It's very loving. It's mature and it's wise and it's old and it's deep. And it's that, that kind of love, but it is like standing side by side, male and female, staying side by side and working together. So it feels that way too. So it's, it, you seem to have been communicating with your guides, higher self, like you're, you're talking to them about what you want to do next. And it does feel like you've reached the end of a, a cycle, a timeline, or you are creating it. Um, which is the same thing, basically. You always create it, but it, it somehow there's a divine time for it, which was already pre-created anyway. But it does feel like you have been choosing it and firmly choosing it, and, and it is a divine time. It's, it's very unique, though. This energy is unique in how you've accomplished it. You have the secret on how to end the timeline to start with something new. Like, that's what this energy is. You, as you are, the human, have been communicating with guides, higher self, etc. Um, uh, Mr. T. <laughs> Let me re remember his name. Tamaritha. Yes, okay. And, it, and it's been decided that it is the end of your cycle. This a soul cycle. It is it is the end. You've done everything you need to do. That's what I... It's very rare that I ever feel this. It's just... It's that. Like, it's final. I said it's done, so it's done. And it, somehow it is done. <laughs> How many people do that? But it's just still not done. But for you, it's working. You're speaking to your higher self right now, your higher self. Uh, why can't I remember his name? It, it keeps disappearing from my head for some reason. Tamaritha, Tamaritha, I can't remember this. We keep wanting to call him Mr. T now. You're speaking to your higher self and she is also in bird feathers, white ones. She also has a bit of a tribal look to her. It's a pure white, like some kind of albino bird. And it's like a eagle or hawk type of bird. But it, she also is echoing a type of earth energy. An earth presence. Also echoing a type of islander, tribal type of islander. And this bird exists there. <sighs> she wears something of this this bird the this bird's feathers. But it's an enormous bird. Like it's a huge bird. Its face is like the size of a, a wolf, and she wears it as like a tribal, um, part of her tribal garb. There's something about a pink sky. She also has a staff and hers has crystals dangling on the side of it. She's a, she's not, she's a lot more reserved. She, she's just, I don't see her doing, making music, but being very deep inside of herself with her emotions and feelings and even closing her eyes and feeling ripples of, of emotions just vibrating throughout her being and feeling completely connected to nature, every, every, every atom that creates everything in our world, like she seems to tap into it. What's complicated again is I'm talking to your higher self. It could, <clears throat> this could be defined as a, it's like you have a higher self at every dimension, all right? So let's say if we're in the third dimension, you have a higher self in the fourth dimension and a higher self in the fifth and the sixth and the seventh and the eighth and ninth and tenth and all the way up to source and to oneness. 
And this higher self is like a 12th dimension, okay? Um, it's up there. And Mr. T is up there too. At this 12th dimension, you're side by side. These two higher selves. Now, she's echoing what is an aspect of you. <clears throat> reminding me a lot of this other Earth type aspect of Mr. T. <laughs> and you're both living in two different worlds, but living very similar to one another. Very similar. All the while, here you are, just this this type of Earth, in this version of you, that seems... You carry this with you, but yet... I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna stop there. I wanna see what happens next. There is go, this has got to come full circle. I'm not gonna leave you hanging here because I can't leave myself hanging here. I gotta understand this more. <laughs> it's just so interesting and different. Okay. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is actually really good. It's a, uh, it's, it's hurt. It feels like hurt to me. Like, um, sad. Like, uh, broken heart a bit. And, um, the hurt, it kind of makes, uh, creates a bit of an angry feeling. <sighs> Sadness. Like, it didn't work out. <sighs> it's really youthful. But it's a hard lesson in love. Oh, man. This is actually take us, taking us into depth. What's interesting is I feel this coming from this tribal girl, okay? But I don't know that it is actually her pain. But I'm shown a scene where there's some kind of an arranged, like, um, let's say that you've grown up with the same kids. And now you're going to go through this ceremony. You're 16 now, or the ceremony, you know. And now you're going to go through the ceremony. And the ceremony is going to determine who you're going to spend the rest of your life with, okay? Will you fall in, in love with a particular person? And it just turns out that the way the ceremony goes, um, you, aren't, you aren't chosen to be with that particular person. You're chosen to be with somebody else. You're okay with that, but you're also like, feel loss. You feel like, really devastated, but you're also strong enough to be mature about it, but you're also, like, kind of back and forth, emotionally back and forth between strong and mature and just really hurt and angry. But then back to strong and mature again, then hurt and angry, then strong and mature, then hurt and angry. It just keeps going around and around. Because you do feel hurt and angry. And how are you going to stop feeling that way? So you just choose to feel mature about it. Until you just start to cry again. Because you can be mature about it. But it's just so, so new and not what you had been praying for kind of thing. Now all the while, it feels like this Islander girl is completely smiling and bright and like the the higher self is just glowing through her being and i see this this other aspect of your soul going through this experience of sadness and grief and loss and confusion and romance sort of um the rest of your life with the one that you didn't choose you know <laughs> and that seems separate again <sighs> So it's almost like helping you to connect with how many different aspects of yourself there are going on all at the same time. And same with this, Tamar Tamaratha, also the same thing.
and somehow bringing up this memory in this sort of um I mean there's all these different connections between you and yourselves just the basic ones that we've seen this far but it seems like it goes so many layers deeper than this and then we have Tamaratha's the higher self and then this earthbound self who's astral traveling and coming to visit you etc is also connected to all of this too because you're all connected to each other all the while you're ready to put away the r-rated R life experiences you're done you're going to the g-rated stuff you're strong standing strong with this however there's something that you're avoiding feeling because in the end, there isn't any R-rated or G-rated stuff. There's just what are we need, what are we working on now? Um, otherwise, it's called avoidance, you know. And avoidance does create new timelines, new timelines of avoidance. <laughs> so eventually, you're gonna have to work on the stuff you don't want to work on, right? But if you can come to peace with it and realize that everything already is perfect, like what truly do we have to work on? If we could just accept ourselves for being awkward, for saying things wrong, um, for hurting that person's feelings even though we didn't mean to, or maybe we just wish they could understand where we're coming from, but they can't, so we are hurting their feelings, and then that hurts our feelings. Like, But this was a perfect moment. That's what makes a good book. And th this is the great characters that, that we're working with here. That's what makes you a great character, a great story. And don't get rushed here. You don't want to rush the story. You don't want to rush it. You don't want to get ahead of yourself. In fact, you want to stay and linger in these pages for as long as you can. Because that's how truly meaningful it is. If you can allow yourself to access that meaning. And that's why it keeps telling me it's about the heart. But it feels like it's about so much more than that. But it just keeps coming back to the heart. I am to look at your energy field through these eyes because as much as I wanted to go into each and every chakra and get real practical with you and real like just down to earth practical real world stuff, I meant to show you this and speak like this and introduce you to these energies and other ways of perceiving yourself while connecting you to these truths. You need this. You need this right now. Because what I'm saying is creating warmth in your heart, warmth in your soul, warmth about yourself, a new interpretation of life itself and the whole point of it all. And even your connection with the spirit guide, which is so precious and so special and beyond imagination as well. How truly meaningful it is. And maybe you can tell that in your heart, you know? Let's get into soul contracts and stuff. Let's see what you did right. <laughs> I love that. I want to know, spirit guides. I want to know what did I do right. <laughs> Whenever they, they're just like, you're always doing everything right, you know? <laughs> it's like, but how come I don't feel like it? <laughs> you're creating a really good book right now, Abby. You're doing everything right. <laughs> you're following your heart. You're doing the best that you know how to do. What more could you do? If you don't know how to do it any better than how you're doing it right now, then how could you have done anything wrong? <laughs> you're doing everything as best as you can comprehend it in your heart and in your mind and with what you're working with. You can't do it any better. And you could say you could do it so much worse, but if you want to go down that road, it's only because you're trying very hard to work on the most vulnerable aspects of yourself that you're encouraging it to just trying to resist, trying to make it go away instead of facing it. When we try to make things go away, when we try to ignore it, that's kind of when um, we could go down those pathways. But there's really no right and there's really no wrong. It's just what are we ready for? What are we afraid of? What is the best that we can do with what we're working with and what we understand, you know? Now ask your higher self. I'm even going above this higher self. I'm just going to go straight to the source. <clears throat> it's so beautiful here. It's like... Um, 
It's just serenity. It's pure serenity. But it's a total completion. Like, it's the feeling of knowing... It's the feeling of true beauty. And it literally feels beautiful here. Like, I feel beautiful here. Everybody feels beautiful here. Even the most deranged, um, twisted, you know, Joker-type characters, Batman-type characters feel truly beautiful here in Source. Because it's our true selves here. It's our true higher selves. It's, it's, it is God. It is the oneness. And in the oneness, it is a connection with everything. With everybody. With all the souls and what all the souls have been through. It's just God. Like, it's pure God. It's so beautiful here. I'm bringing you here with me. I'm bringing um, to Martha here with me as well. I feel like I want him to come with us. Because he's like a friend. Like, he's like your best friend. I mean, he's like your childhood buddy as well. Like, he rode the bus with you. You know, he ate lunch with you. He <laughs> played with you on the playground. Like, he was always there. He went fishing with you. Like, things, it just has that vibe to it. Like, childhood memories. Like, been there for your lifetime. And you're right about that. He has been there from the beginning. Oh, this is really neat. In source, I see you, I see, I'm just going to say what I see, but it, it, it can only be described as you and Tamara thought to merge as two lights, pure, pure light. And you become him and he becomes you. And you share everything you've ever been with him and he shares everything he's ever been with you. And you are in awe of each other and reverence of each other. And you actually say inside your hearts that you'll never let go of the other. It's like a pure love connection. And so you stay in this orb of pure love for all eternity. And in this orb of love, you you live many lives, actually. It's like you live lives that we couldn't even believe would exist. Like spirit lives, spirit level lifetimes. Like, you live in spirit realms, like eternity realms, where you create your own reality, but you just, you give back to each other. Like, you create memories, and you live in those memories with one another, as though you were both there for each other the whole time. You missed each other a lot. I mean, I see you here already. I see you both have been here for all eternity just sharing the memories with each other living in each other's memories but making them wholesome make, making them bearable helping each other get through the hardest of times it's like best friends and it's all purely loving it's pure love this is also happening this has been happening for all your past present and future you had already been doing that before you even had lived those lives, so to speak. That's how surreal it is. That's so how inconceivable it is to the human mind to understand this stuff. But I can feel that they were, they've been here. Even before I was introduced to this event happening, where you both merged into this orb and then you went into the orb and then started living all these lives. It's like spirit level lives where you're enjoying each other's memories and supporting each other through the emotions and healing each other's souls from such from such long incarnated experiences. Um, you were already doing that. You've been doing that. That's what eternity is like. It's that's it's like that. Since the beginning, you had done it. Well, how do, could you have done it since the beginning? You hadn't even lived the lives yet. Well, you had because the beginning and the end are all merged in the present. <laughs> so weird like that. So then there must be, be a destiny without any free will. You know, like this just, again, wrecks the human mind. Is what exactly is real here? 
when it comes to time. And when it comes to existence. But I will say this conversation, I know it's a lot of talking, but it is moving so much in your third eye. It's moving in your throat. It's moving in your heart, primarily these places. <sighs> because it's enriching the soul. It's enriching the soul. And it's helping you to come with, to peace with you. With your self, your life. With the R-rated times and the G-rated times. It's helping you to just feel complete serenity. Because you're in serenity right now. In source. With Tamaratha already. You don't even have to leave this lifetime to already be there. And for you to have that conscious awareness is filling you with so much light and love. That it's, it's disconnecting you from all the pain that you've been through, all the challenges and difficulty. It's just melting it all away like warm, you know, home fresh baked chocolate chip cookies or something. It's perfect. And it's loving and it's, it's beautiful. Starting to get back down to earth, but it's the earth as we know it. It's really, really down to earth. It's like at what the earth we recognize, the earth we know and love. <laughs> like I can feel you here in the same earth as me. Feels like a different earth than these others, these other two. I feel the burden of being human more now. I feel like a long lingering when when will this ever go away kind of thing like some of the unresolved parts of life can feel like you know memories and things can feel that way. Mm. Wow, it's a lot of pressure in the back of the head right now. I feel like we've been working in it. It's slightly above this this third dimension. I mean, oh, wow. It's like I'm pulling everything. Like there was a... Here, I'll draw you a picture. So... Everything that I've experienced has been slightly above where we are here. And here, I'll show you what this looks like. <laughs> so here's us, right? As one person, one happy person. So where I've been this whole time is somewhere exploring you, but also as you're experiencing your reality and thinking about your reality and wanting to know more about Tamaritha as well as yourself, your chakras, your soul timeline. Like we're going up and 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 up like into source and serenity. Now I'm down here, okay? And there seems to be this kind of like roof. And I'm having to pull all this stuff, like I'm taking all this and I'm pulling it all down into yourself, okay? Because there should be no separation between you and all that serenity and the connection and the etern and the eternity of just really beautiful um friendship are you afraid afraid of love that feels like that does that challenge you to feel that that kind of love is is real it's just a question because i'm trying to figure out what is is like resisting this all this love here it's like a, a flame of of just beautiful connection. If you have any part of yourself that criticizes it for any reason, um, 
That's the part of you that have, has been hurt and is pushing the love away. And this love can be simple. It's like two childhood best friends. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, and it's been through lifetimes, even spirit guides, astral travelers, higher selves. Like the connection is there, interdimensionally there. Like let yourself be weakened by that. Like in that beautiful way that you just surrender to it. Just surrender to it. It's literally coming straight down through the top of your head, through your third eye. It's coming straight down into you. So I'm like pulling down the sheet of all the good stuff from heaven. I'm just pulling it straight down into you. And you are worthy of it. All your chakras are worthy of it. Your soul timeline's worthy of it. This version of you and all the other versions of you are worthy of it. And all the characters in your story, we are so thankful and we all feel blessed because you choose to feel worthy of it. We want that for you. There's weariness that is coming out but your feet. It feels like weariness, exhaustion. Feels like the scramble between the Joker and the Batman. And when will this tug of war ever end? And I just disappear the thought. Continuing to pull down this. I just keep thinking of a really happy dog that, that somehow gets like <laughs> this fancy tablecloth. And upon the tablecloth are all these like fancy meats. <laughs> and the dog, like the tablecloth is coming down and the dog's mouth is just drooling like, yes, 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 <laughs> come to me. <laughs> and so we're just like bringing all the goods down, down, down into you. And so I'm just encouraging you to know that you can just be the dog that wants the meat. You can just be yourself that wants the love. Like, don't resist your natural instincts. Don't resist what is truly deep within your soul, which is the infinite and eternal love that started in the beginning and it still exists at the end. I'm still bringing it on down. So you can feel truly connected. There's no limit here. It's really amazing because I'm getting it. It's almost past your spine now. It's like getting into your legs. Like I'm still pulling it through your legs and pulling your like all the way down past your feet. It's just like I had to pull it because I'm I, there's still like all these little resistance factors that I'm just continuing to send serenity into every little factor of resistance in this dimensional self that you are. And I'm just continuing to pull it down and pull it down and pull it down and encourage and encourage and encourage and just let yourself feel the love. And it's the love that is your true self. The love that is Tamaritha's true self. Like it's, it's all... It's source, it's serenity, it's, it's pure. You still struggle to just love you as you. But you are working on it. And this is taking away the burden of like self-judgment or persecution taking away that burden it's easing it's easing this love right on in it's giving you more ability to to just love yourself i 
I feel like this session is more than just for today. Obviously, a session like this, there's going to be energy work that just keeps rippling and rippling over the next days and weeks as you start to, to be introduced to a new energy pattern in your own energy field. This isn't just speaking, this is energetic communication and it's shifting and opening awareness. It's removing a dimensional layer, like a, it's helping you to feel connected to everything. It's bringing the source into your heart, helping you to feel it. It's helping you, to, it's just reconditioning the way that you're perceiving and receiving and welcoming and loving yourself and letting yourself be loved. It's all that. But I feel like if there are times, you know, several months from now, a year from now, 10 years from now, that you could watch this and you could revisit it and it would do this all over again for you. Over and over and over and over and over and over again for you as many times as you would ever need it. And I feel like that is a gift too from Mr. T <laughs> to Maritha because that's the type of love that he has for you that he would want you to have access to a gift of healing that keeps on giving and never stops giving and that whenever you felt vulnerable that you could turn this on and you could access his love for you again and again and again and and that's fine and that's good sometimes we question love that is that pure and how it, it relates to a world that feels kind of tarnished and confusing. They just let that love in, you know. And ask it to help you. Just ask it to help you with love. Open up to it. Love yourself with it. Believe in it deeper than you've ever believed in it before speak to it feel like you might actually get to know Tamartha on a whole new level energetically and deeper understanding of the love that exists between you both okay that's everything wow really really different approach <sighs> not what I expected wow you feel like you're just glowing very warm and bright and serene peaceful on the inside you still have aspects of yourself that need support in welcoming the love in but the support is here And that's what helps you, again, to feel that serenity inside yourself. <sighs> all right, that's all I can share. It's such beautiful energy, it's hard to find completion with it because it's like I want to just amplify it more and more and more for you because it is so beautiful and I want you to really access it like so deeply. It's very triumphant, really, to feel that, to have that. It's super great. All right. Thank you so much again for this beautiful experience, for sharing with others. And for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, thank you all. Again, have a beautiful day.